Hello everyone, I'm Brent Sweeney, the Director of Performances with Charleston Jazz. Today we're excited to premiere our From the Archives Art of Jazz Virtual Concert Series. The Art of Jazz is an annual performance series presented in collaboration with the Gibbs Museum of Art and Charleston Jazz. The idea is unique in that the musicians compose and perform their music inspired by exhibits on display at the Gibbs Museum. Under normal circumstances, we would all be enjoying this series together this summer, live and in person. But unfortunately, we had to postpone the series to next summer due to COVID-19. Each Thursday at 7 p.m., we premiere a full Charleston Jazz Orchestra performance on our YouTube channel and Facebook. And once a month this summer, we'll show a past Art of Jazz performance. Our first performance today took place on June 20th, 2018, and features poet Marcus Amaker and percussionist Quentin Baxter. We hope you enjoy it.
light to those who are clouded in darkness. We need to feel safe. We are picture perfect, but we cannot be framed. Our diverse brush strokes are not a stain because we are works of art. Satellites 
of sound.
safe? You feel safe? Yeah. All right. We are safe to be freaky tonight. We're safe to uh, have all kinds of fun. My name is Marcus Amaker. I'm super honored to be here again on this stage at the Gibbs Museum. Uh, I did a book release party here earlier this year, and it was a fantastic experience. And the energy in here is great. And I'm feeling this energy in here again. So thank you all for being here. So uh, we, uh, we released the album, so this is another uh, celebration of that record, which we have for sale. Yes. Yes. And, we have and we have it on vinyl. It's orange. Come on, y'all. This, this, this is some good stuff. Here has a record player. All right, so all of y'all need to be walking out with one of these. I'm gonna check you. I'm gonna be like, where, where is your record? Uh, it's also available on CD and digital as well, but we all know that it's not so on digital, so you need to buy the record. Um, I also have the book here for sale too. Um, it's all part of the Empath project that I came with Quentin to last year, about fall of last year. And, and we made it work, so I'm so excited that it's here. I'm gonna read some poetry uh, inspired by the Gibbs Museum. So what's amazing about this space, I, it's funny, I hear a lot of people in Charleston say, oh, I, I wish, wish we had a good museum, I wish we had like some really artsy stuff to go to, it seems all stoic and it's all beaches, and I'm like, have you been to the Gibbs Museum yet? Yeah. Just go, go to the um, floors and see all of the exhibits. They tasked me with finding something to write about, which is not an easy thing. Like, um, first of all, problems as a poet laureate, you know, you're asked to write about stuff. But I picked uh, one of the exhibits that's on uh, Gallery 9. It's um, called Betwixt and Between. And um, what I, why I picked this, is behind you, is because it really goes well with the theme of empath. So empath is all about connection, especially connection with Mother Nature, also thinking about trees as well in particular. We're gonna be doing a track about that. Even the artwork here, as you see, tree rings are in here. So when, so when I saw that, I said, okay, I'm gonna to have to write about this. Empath is about how tree rings kind of look like thumbprints, um, which shows that connection. But I decided to sort of go in my empath mind and write about this. So this is called Intertwine. This is brand new. You don't have to look far for signs of connection. Floor to ceiling strands of shared air, or sidewalk to sun oxygen binding our breathing. Trees are made up of tightened tension of sticks, betwixt and between deep-rooted solitude that can withstand storms. Recycled, it can become art that again reminds us of connection. We are no more than plants. Each lung's exercise is a leaning of meaning. We lean toward light even when we are not nourished. But nourishment is enlightenment because we are sticks held together by love, unbroken. I would like to be woven with you. <laughs> so these poems that I'm asked to write are the hardest poems to write, but I am really thankful for the challenge. And as poet laureate, things come to me and they ask me to write poems about them. And one of the ones that I recently did was about Septima Clark. And who here knows who Miss Septima Clark is? Excellent. I was in um, Edisto, no, I was in Irma doing a show there, and I asked, and nobody raised their hand, so I said, okay, this is going to be a history lesson for you all. But um, so Septima Clark, she was born 
on Wentworth Street, and they had a dedication uh, to her home. I was asked to write a poem and um, do this poem in front of her family members, and big honor. And this is another one that is new. It's called Movement's Mother. And again, I feel like everything that I write has that connection, and has, um, I really am in this mindset of really trying to bring out connections and where we are, um, things that we need to be reminded of, you know? So this is called Movement's Mother. Part one. There are spirits among us, ghosts of grassroots movements echoing through our soil. Charleston's poinsettia was a warrior woman who blossomed despite an unholy city's unsettled winds. She was light through dark matter, a sunflower through storms, a teacher of feminism and freedom with lessons overstepping limitations for a nation that needed to move forward. Stillness was not an option. Part two. There's a song among us, an out-of-tune harmony with deep-rooted pain, with racism's wretched refrain, but a daughter of the low country became the conductor of change, clearing the air for a chorus of beautiful black voices because silence was not an option. Part three. There's still worry within us. Tireless activists have died, running marathons with worn out tears, weary with fear, blinded by lies. But we can look through the visionary eyes of Miss Septima Clark. She who taught giants how to be tall. She who humbly rose so high that heavenly elevation is normalized. Falling down is no longer an option. stage and got to shake the hands of her cousins and granddaughters and things like that, they told me in a very loving way, <laughs> very loving way, that when I speak her name, I should say Miss Septima Clark, it's a respect thing. So I said, okay, cool. So from now on, I'm going to go and rewrite the poem. So if anybody hears me saying Septima Clark, slap me and just go, you know, know, know your place. So, all right, so this is another one that I was asked to write. I'm bringing out my poet laureate-ness today. Uh, so there um, is a book nook on Upper King. It's across from John L. Dart Library, you know, where the, where the food line is. It's across from there. There's a uh, daycare there for, um, for kids. And they redid one of the gardens there to be a safe space for kids in the neighborhood to come and read and learn and do workshops and stuff. I'm gonna be doing some workshops with some kids there. Um, and it was inspired by uh, Cynthia Hurd, who is one of the Emanuel Nine. And she was also the manager of the library that's across the street, John L. Dart. So this was always a dream of hers to do something like this, to have this garden for kids. So I was asked to write a poem. This is called The Resolution of Wings. Here is the place where a community blossoms, where hope still finds the right amount of air to rise, to spread its wings defiantly in the deflating aftermath of a tragedy that grounded us. Here is the place where we will no longer be cocooned in sadness because our ascension knows no fear. Here, curiosity becomes creativity. The smallest idea can become a masterpiece and art will connect us through colorful conversation. Here, children of all ages will come and perch themselves on the mighty shoulders of an angel's dream, finally realize one woman's lifelong mission to make sure we all knew the beauty and freedom of fight.
Pastor about to uh, shake us awake some more.
trees, and lynchings. If the angel oak tree could talk, she'd tell us stories we don't want to hear. Thank you. 
Oh yes, they are. Okay, there we go. Can we have a round of applause for my parents? Y'all can blame them uh, for this. It's their fault. All right, so this is a poem about Prince. Prince fans in the house. So um, I should mention all of these songs that we've been doing are on the album. The album is back there to purchase, yes. You all are going to buy five copies, that's great. You all are so nice. Um, but this uh, is the last track, the second to last track on the record. And I'm a major Prince fan, so I put a lot of references to Prince songs in here. Um, modern day Prince as well as the 80s stuff, so I hope you dig it. And it's one of the ones that I don't have memorized, I'm such a Prince fan, it's almost too emotional for me. <laughs> this is called Black Magic, Black Muse. Ready? 
no change, your voice stayed the same. New lotus flowers grew from your paisley playground. The sun, moon, and stars were at your whim. You gave us the future of soul in 2010. And the rainbow children danced. Thank you, Dr. Zianna.